Today's walk is the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail, which has to be my favourite waterfalls walk in the UK. Before we start, let's have a look at what we'll be passing today. We head along the well-made path alongside the River Twiss, where we soon pass by a money tree. Who says it doesn't grow on trees? We then cross over the River Twiss by way of a footbridge. And then, not too much further on, we pass back over it by way of another footbridge called Pekka Bridge, which affords the first views of the lower parts of Pekka Falls. We then continue along the path alongside the River Twist as it passes by the upper parts of Pekka Falls. Pekka Falls is actually a collection of five waterfalls which drop 30 metres over the slate and sandstone. After Pekka Falls, we quickly arrive at Hollybush Spout and then, in the clearing, we reach Thornton Force. We then leave the River Twist to head over to the River Door for the return to Ingleton, with views of Ingleborough ahead. On reaching the River Door, the first fall you see are the Beasley Falls. These are then soon followed by the Rival Falls. Before reaching the smaller waterfalls through Baxon Gill Gorge. Further down the path, you can then look back towards the Snow Falls. After that we cross over another footbridge and then leave the river before passing by the disused stores quarry before heading back through the centre of Ingleton to reach the car park. Stay watching until the end to see what you can eat and drink after the walk. Back at the car park there is an information board and toilets. There is also a cafe at the entrance that we'll see at the end of the walk. The video will be a little different today, more real-time footage, so less speeded up, and as the route is obvious, following the well-marked trail, less talking so you can take in the sounds. The car park as you can see is large, but it can get busy at weekends and in the summer. There is additional parking available in Ingleton. As most of the footpaths are on private land, there is an entrance fee, which is used on the upkeep of the paths and insurance costs. For me, this is my favourite waterfall walk in the UK. Pay and pass through the ticket office. Just past the ticket office is an information board showing you information about the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail and warnings about keeping to the path and keeping children under control, etc. There is a visitor leaflet showing the trail and the falls available when you are passing through the ticket office. If you want to look at that in advance, it's also available as download on the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail website that also includes information on opening times and prices. The trail initially is a flat gravel path, but if you are unsteady on your feet or don't like too many steps, keep watching as I've tried to show what you'll be walking on as you go around. Whilst the height gate isn't too substantial, there are quite a few steps.
you soon reach an impressive money tree. Who says money doesn't grow on trees? It is believed that the origins of putting coins into trees, so-called money trees or wish trees, dates back to pagan times. People believe that mystical spirits resided in the trees and by offering gifts to them, they would receive wisdom, healing and good luck. This tradition is similar to throwing coins into fountains or into wishing wells. It is March at the moment, but if you walk the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail later in the spring, summer or autumn, you will hear and see far more birds than today. But with the leaves on the trees, the views are different. I enjoy the walk both with and without leaves on the trees, but do find the best time to do it is a day or two after a period of prolonged heavy rain. There are small informational signs interspersed throughout the walk. This one letting you know that you're in an open woodland. This walk is reasonably easy to follow with the trail well signed all the way around. But if you do want to see it on a map, the route of today's Ingleton Waterfalls Trail Walk is set out on an Ordnance Survey map along with a GPS download for your phone or GPS device on our Walks for All website the link for which is down in the description below.
after passing through the wooded Swiller Glen and then walking on for about a kilometre, we reach and then pass over Manor Bridge, a footbridge, which crosses over the River Twiss. The bridge affords views downstream and upstream. The trail reaches what it is classing as a viewpoint for Pecker Falls. They do look a bit distant though from here and much better views will be had shortly. We cross Pecker Bridge to head over the River Twist again, from which we get a much better view of the start of Pecker Falls. Pecker Falls is actually a collection of five waterfalls that drop 30 metres over the slate and sandstone underneath. Thank you. 
Once over Pecker Bridge, we then climb the steps to pass by the rest of Pecker Falls. If you are enjoying this Ingleton Falls trail walk, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you know when any new walks have been uploaded. It's free to subscribe and your likes and comments really do help promote our channel. Pekka Falls, as I just mentioned, effectively form three groups. The lower falls that we've just passed, the middle falls and the upper falls. Overall dropping 30 metres over the alternating beds of Ingleton Group Slate and Sandstone Grey Wax. The slate, which is more easily eroded, forms the plunge pools, whilst the sandstone forms the falls. As we continue on, I'll apologise now if my camera work is even more shaky and jerky than normal as my little gimbal I used to smooth the footage gave up working for this walk about here. These are the Twin Falls at the top of Pekka Falls.
we then arrive at Hollybush Spout. We then climb up to and pass through a gate. Looking back over the gate, you can see that it's one way around the walk and the steps that you've just walked up. We continue on now to head past this green shack, which on previous occasions when I passed used to be a snack bar. Now we are quite a way above the River Twist below. This next section of the walk is much more open along a wider valley.
as we pass by Cuckoo Island below in the River Twis, which has been formed by the river dividing, the imposing Thornton Force comes into view ahead. Thornton Force falls 14 metres into its plunge pool below. The word force is derived from the Viking word foss, being another name for a waterfall. Over the years, as the overhanging limestone has been undercut, it is believed that the waterfall has retreated about 50 metres from its original post-glacial location from about 17,000 years ago. After enjoying a sit and admiring the waterfall, head now up the steps beside it. At the top of the steps we reach Raven Ray, which is a moraine made up of glacial till or boulder clay, which was deposited by a glacier running down Kingsdale during the last ice age. The moraine basically created a dam at the end of Kingsdale, which is believed to have formed a lake in the Kingsdale Valley itself. After many years the water cut through it, resulting in Thornton Force. The river twist that you can see here cut through and created the gorge you can see the start of ahead. Twist itself is believed to be derived from the Old English word twizzler, meaning the wedge of land formed by a river fork. In this case I'm assuming it's referring to nearby Twistleton that we will pass by shortly, which is a farm and a wedge of land created by the river Twist and the river Doe as they head on to merge in Ingleton. If you are new to hiking or just want ideas for walking gear to wear and take on the walk, check out some of our kit list recommendations down in the description below. Looking back down to the right here, you can see the top of the gorge that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. 
with the Kingsdale Valley ahead, cross over the footbridge over the River Twist. and then just head up the steps. Pass through the gate and turn right onto Twistleton Lane. a sign about wind turbines which is quite apt for today with how windy it's got pass through the kissing gate and then continue ahead on the lane. There are very few times when I've done this walk when there isn't an ice cream van in this spot. In the distance, a view towards the forest of Borland. And over to the right, he's looking over in the direction of Ingleton and beyond. Up to our left as we pass along this lane is Twistleton Scar End, being the Twistleton I mentioned earlier. The Gordale limestone here is now a series of scars and terraces. If you have any comments on this walk or find anything has changed, footpaths, gates, etc please let us know down in the comments below. Upon reaching the gate, pass through it and just continue down the lane. The lane here has dry stone walls either side of it. There are believed to be over 5,000 miles of dry stone walling in the Yorkshire Dales alone. After a short distance, over the wall to the left is our first view of Ingleborough, one of what is known as the Yorkshire Three Peaks. If you want to look at the whole of that walk, check out our Yorkshire Three Peaks walk, the link is in the description below. Just 
continue straight on down the left hand side of Scar End and Twistleton Hall just following the signs for the waterfall walk. Pass over the style built into the wall and again just continue straight on along the track ahead. The snow-capped Ingleborough, again, lies straight ahead. If you want to learn more about Ingleborough and check out our walk videos of the various ways to climb it, check out our ultimate guide to Ingleborough, the link for which is down in the description below. Around to the left, again, you can see up to Tussleton Scar End. Pass through the gate and upon meeting Oddie's Lane, cross it and head down the road opposite, signed for Falls Park and the Ingleton Waterfall Trail. We are now heading down towards the River Door that provides the second half of the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail as it winds its way down into Ingleton. Over to the left, you can see the pitches of the touring side part of Falls Park with their picturesque views. Follow the road down and then branch off to the left between the hedges following the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail sign. Shortly after which you pass by some toilets. A few yards further on, you then pass by the Falls Refreshment Centre. I'm just not sure of the opening hours of this one though. Continue along by the side of the wall. And then again, rather than following the road around to the right, go down between the hedge and the wall, following the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail footpath sign. Just before dropping down to Beasley Falls, there is an alternative footpath sign that you can see on the right hand side that keeps to the higher ground if the path we are about to follow gets flooded. This rejoins the path we are going to follow near the snow falls.
Over to the left, you can see the top of Beasley Falls. This is what's known as the triple spout within the Beasley Falls. We'll see it again shortly when we look at it head on from below. Hopefully you're getting a good idea of the path and the steps and the underfoot conditions. This here is looking down on the top of Rival Falls, which we'll get a better view of shortly, a little further down the walk.
looking back now you can see the two falls of rival falls and between them is a plunge pool that is reputed to be over 25 meters deep The River Doe now enters the Baxton Gill Gorge ahead. We'll get a much clearer view of that shortly from a viewing platform. Down to the left here, we can head down onto the viewing platform. Gill Gorge is quite an impressive gorge on the Singleton Waterfalls Trail. The sound, albeit it's been quite noisy all the way around, echoes more around this area.
back up the steps. Just turn left and continue along the trail. There are a few of these wooden sculptures scattered throughout this trail. We now drop down to the remains of one of the disused slate quarries alongside the river door. Besides being very windy today, as you may have picked up from the mic noise, it's also just being very wet, as you can see from the river levels and from the water extruding out of the ground. Down to the left here is the end of Snow Falls which we'll see a little bit better, just a little further along the walk. If you look behind now, you can see snowfalls much clearer. Pass over the river door by way of this footbridge.
pass through this gate. And, as you can see, there is no access from this side. The Ingleton Waterfalls Trail is designed to be one way only. Head up the steps here and just continue along the trail. This here is also part of a disused slate quarry. path now starts to climb and move away from the river door as it passes through the aptly named Quarry Wood. Pass through the kissing gate and then cross over the small wooden footbridge. Just to continue straight on along the path directly ahead. Either path can be taken here as they just join up a little further on. On the other side of the river door, you can see the remains of the disused Mealbank Quarry, which is a geological site of special scientific interest. The quarry closed in 1909 and it used to have two lime kilns. Continuing on along the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail, we reach these walled remains of Storrs Quarry. It was believed to have had two lime kilns, and these large structural remains of around 15 metres by 6 metres are believed to have been the remains of those two kilns. Just keep now on along the wide gravelled track.
If you are enjoying this Ingleton Falls trail walk, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you know when any new walks have been uploaded. It's free to subscribe and your likes and comments really do help promote our channel. Pass through the gate to start heading along Thacking Lane. We soon arrive at the corner of the square where a sign shows the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail to the left and an information board on the wall shows what is where in Ingleton. As we have almost finished the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail walk, we'll start to have a look now at where you can eat and drink in Ingleton. If fish and chips are your choice for the post walk food, then across from the sign is the Ingleton Chippy. Heading back up to the sign, we'll follow the road around to the right, following the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail sign. You then pass by our garden centre. To end the walk without looking around Ingleton, you basically turn right at the end of this road and then a short distance further on, right again and follow the signs back to the Waterfalls car park. We will get back to that shortly. On meeting the road, directly across is Bernie's of Ingleton Cafe. The cafe closed uh, in early 2023, but I believe from reading online that it is about to reopen. Next door to that is Peaks and Troughs, which is a small bar and restaurant. Due to the space and only six tables inside, dogs aren't allowed in. Next door to that is the Opo, or the Old Post Office and Micro Bar, which is an award-winning bar, appearing in the Good Beer Guide 2024. Serves a range of cask ales, craft beers, wine, spirits, cocktails, and I believe is dog-friendly. For a short detour, head up the road, where we find the Wheat Sheaf Inn. The Wheat Sheaf was built in the 17th century. They serve cask ales, wines, spirits and food. They have some accommodation and a good sized beer garden around at the back and they are dog friendly. Heading back into the centre, we will just continue walking along the road now from the Opo Bar, where we soon reach Inglesport, which is an outdoor shop, but it does have a cafe upstairs. Amongst other things, they serve a selection of cooked breakfast, toasties, specials of the day, along with home baked cakes, scones, and tray bakes. Again, it's dog friendly. Across the road is the village kitchen which serve sweets and savoury refreshments, along with a range of teas and coffees. It's all fresh, local and homemade. Heading further along the road, between the food and drink stops, you could take in one of the craft shops or one of the galleries in Ingleton.
around the next corner if pizzas are more your thing there is Ingleton Pizza A few yards further on is La Tavernetta, a family run Italian restaurant serving pizzas, pastas and other mains along with bottled beers, spirits and wines. Across the road is St Mary's Church which dates from 1886 but it is believed that there has been a place of worship on this site since the 12th century as the font dates back to Norman times. The oldest remaining part of the church is the 15th century perpendicular style tower. The way back to the car park is down the slope here to the right but for now we'll just ignore that again and just continue just wandering along the road. We soon pass by a memorial water fountain in the memory of Joseph Carr who was instrumental in the setting up and promoting of the Ingleton Waterfalls walk after writing a series of articles for local newspapers about the scenic attractions near Ingleton. Down below you can see the road we'll be walking on shortly over the river's door and twist back to the Ingleton Waterfalls car park. But before then, if we just cross over the road we arrive at G&T's Cafe and Kitchen which serves breakfast, brunch, homemade cakes, along with teas and coffees. Just opposite that is the Three Horseshoes, a Thwaites' pub. It serves a range of food and drink. It's dog friendly and has a beer garden around at the back. Just further along the road is the Bank Top restaurant. It's a dining experience offering a seasonally locally sourced menu to cater for all tastes and it's licensed. There's no dogs allowed in the restaurant. If you carry on along this road under the bridge there's more parking and toilets on your left and then about 100 yards further on is the Craven Heifer. They serve a wide range of ales, spirits, wine, lagers along with homemade meals. They have some accommodation and are dog friendly. Back now opposite the Banktop restaurant you can see the viaduct which dominates the immediate skyline here and once carried the Ingleton branch railway line and was meant to form part of the main line from London to Scotland but it fell victim to the ongoing rivalry between competing railway companies so eventually it didn't. As we turn back around we now head down the road to the left. At the bottom of the road is the ex-servicemen's club. This is where we're going to turn left in a minute. But if you just look briefly up to the right, this is the road that you would have come down if you didn't come via all the food and eating places. We cross over the bridge that passes back over the river door. On the other side you can again see the viaduct that is 265 yards long comprises of 11 brick arches each spanning 57 feet and is about 85 feet above the river Greta. Passenger services stopped here in January 1954 with the last train being played out by the Kirby Lonsdale Brass Band with the eventual closure of the line coming in July 1966 the track was pulled up in the following year. Head on now to the next bridge which crosses over the River Twiss. The rivers Twiss and Doe join together just a little bit further downstream just around about where the viaduct is. They both lose their name and form the River Greta. 
Once over the bridge, we head on the few yards to turn back right into the Ingleton Waterfalls Trail car park. If the car park is busy, you can park elsewhere in Ingleton and then just walk down here to start the walk. The last place we pass by where you may be able to eat and drink is the Ingleton Falls Bar and Kitchen. Unfortunately, as at 19th of March 2024, the cafe is currently closed, but I believe it is awaiting renovation. If you do notice any of these eating and drinking establishments we've just been through have closed or any new ones have opened, please let us know down in the comments below. Back in the car park, you can see there's some electric chargers here. Before we end today's walk, we've put together a fly through using the Ordnance Survey app to give the walk and the surrounding area a little bit more perspective. We left the car park and followed the riverside path upstream along the River Twiss. After heading through Swilla Glen and crossing Manor Bridge, we soon arrived at Pecker Falls. These were then quickly followed by Hollybush Spout and Thornton Force. We headed on more in the open now through Raven Ray to cross Raven Ray Bridge before climbing to turn right onto Twistleton Lane. From the aerial view over to the left you can see the Kingsdale Valley and you can see to the left of the path Twistleton Scar End much clearer. We passed by the buildings at Scar End and Twistleton Hall, where we had views of Ingleborough ahead before dropping down and crossing Oddie's Lane. The car park you can see on the road above is the one at White Scar Caves, and the big hole in the ground is a quarry that luckily you can't see from the walk. Heading down now alongside the River Door, we passed the Beasley Falls, and then the Snow Falls, and then Baxton Gill Gorge. We then crossed over the footbridge and headed up through Quarry Wood. We then passed by Storrs Quarry before heading on back to into Ingleton where to get back to the car park you can see all you need to do was turn right, right again and then over the bridges and turn right to head back into the car park. That ends our walk for today.